everyone, Doc Alley here today to discuss from scrubs to scalpels what to expect in your upcoming surgery rotation. Stay tuned. So for the first tidbit, I guess I could talk about what I experienced during my surgery rotation. Um, for the most part, I had a great experience and not great in that I loved everything about the experience but I had a lot of exposure to various different specialties. So I was able to go to about, there were always like about four to five, maybe even six surgeries per team. So we were all divided into three different teams. There was a team for general surgeries like lap appies, lap coles. Then there was specific surgeries like vascular and what else was on red team? I can't remember plastics and then blue team was more so like bariatrics and like um, cardiothoracic surgeries. So they were all di divided up into the teams and we rotated through the teams. It was a 12 week experience so within one month we'd be done with one team and then we go to the next team. So I saw almost I don't want to say almost everything because I obviously didn't witness almost everything. Like I would kill to have witnessed a pediatric surgery, but I didn't get to see any of those. But I saw a lot of interesting things like even colorectal surgery. I saw a total knee amputation. I saw breast reductions. I saw liposuction. I saw a nipple reconstruction for a post mastectomy patient. That was amazing to me. Um, I saw a AV uh, fistula formation, that was crazy. I saw a lot and I saw things that were really like amazing. Like I was obsessed with 600 pound life as like a preteen, I can't tell you why. And so being able to witness my first bariatric surgery was crazy. So that's all I'm saying is like, it was great. I saw a lot and um, I got some hands-on experience as well. Um, I learned, again, I already, already learned in OB how to scrub in. And so once I scrubbed in, I'd be able to um, help in the surgeries. So as a medical student, you actually get to do more than you would think. So I was able to suture on real life patients. Um, that was nerve wracking, but at the same time exciting. Um, I was able to suction. That's pretty funny. And majority of the time, your jobs will be suctioning, holding tools to make sure that they can see, and then suturing. As a medical student, that's all you should be doing. If they're letting you do anything else, I, I'd report that. <laughs> As a successful medical school student, I'm sure you're already aware that life and medical school requires multiple adaptations and shifting and the ability to be adaptable. So I had a new form and format for my patient presentations than I had in internal, than I had in pediatrics. And so it's always constantly changing, changing even OBGYN obviously. Various things matter to various specialties. I have it here and I'll talk about this more in the tip section is like quick labs, essential labs, um, essential medications, essential medical diagnoses I'm expecting from you. Another thing that happened during my surgical rotation was that this was when I had my 4 a.m. wake ups and this was when I had to experience 24 hour shifts and this was when I also had normally 11 hour days. So. If you guys haven't already checked out my other video about tough rotations, please go check that out and you'll know all what I'm talking about, um, about how to handle all those maneuvers and everything. But this was that rotation for me for surgery and I liked it because it gave me more of an eye-opening experience about what to expect if I were to ever become a surgical resident versus if I was pampered enough to only have to show up at like 7 or 8 a.m. and then leave around after one or two surgeries. Like no, I was there the whole day, most of the time. By the time I was heading home, the sun was already starting to set. So it was intense. Um, especially also with like knowledge recall, um, the residents and the attendings, even in the middle of surgery while you're supposed to be focusing on holding this this high and this this hard, um, they'll ask you questions that either will bring you all the way back to basic sciences or be something that was like 
to be expected on your upcoming shelf. And so being able to multitask and critically think, all those things, it happened during the surgical rotation. So as promised, I'm going to show you guys a little bit about patient presentations and surgery so that you guys can get a good idea of what's going on and what to expect. Of course, this is not set in stone, but I feel like this is the standard for typical surgical presentations. So in the beginning, I was a nerd and they kind of made fun of me because I would carry around my iPad because that's what I did in internal. Because in internal, you have to report so many different labs and things that surgery doesn't necessarily care too much about, like they only care about the essentials. So if you've heard about the fishbone diagram, um, we didn't learn this in internal, our attendings never used it, but I guess um, in surgery it's all helpful when you have a sheet like this. So I blocked out all the patient names for HIPAA reasons, but as you can see this um, presentation list, it would have like their age, their past medical history, essential past medical history because there's not a lot of room for a whole lot else. And then what procedures would have, would have already happened or are planned to be um, medications that are essential to the current um, hospitalization and like to their health. Obviously, you're not going to take a patient off of a certain medication if it's not necessary. Um, and then you also want to pay attention to like if the patient's on a blood thinner or if the patient's on anything that can affect their surgery. Um, the studies, so x-rays, CTs, MRIs, these are all essential part of surgery as well because if you have a diagnosis to work with, you know what you're going in to fix. Um, and then this is a fishbone diagram as I was talking about where you report essential things. You focus on overnight events, you focus on vitals, stable or not. I's and O's, especially for patients with abdominal surgery, did their um, bladder go back to regular functioning? Did their bowels return to normal functioning? Um, if they have a chest tube, how much is the chest tube putting out? If they have a cath in, how much is their cath putting out? So you want to specify, like, if you're saying that they put out 2,000 liters, milliliters, then where did the 2,000 come from? Did it come directly from the catheter? Did they urinate directly into the bedpan? Um, if the patient has um, in, like ends, you want to say, is it coming in through IV? Is it coming in through oral? So be specific with that area as well. Um, labs and imaging, try to make sure that you limit that to about within the last 24 hours or your last presentation so that you're not repeating information. Um, and then make your assessment and your plan. So for plan, um, we would stick to system-based. So for neuro, what are you going to do? For CVS, what are you going to do? For RESPI, what are you going to do? Um, this all will make a little bit more sense with my example, so stay tuned. Okay, so we have uh, Mr. Z. He is a 33-year-old male who presents with a spontaneous pneumothorax. Overnight, there were no events reported. Vitals were relatively stable. I's and O's, he had 2,000 in, 500 out, urine output 0.36 milliliters per kilogram per hour, and um, there weren't any chest tube measurements updated. His labs and his imaging have not been updated within the last 24 hours. And this is a Mr. Z, 33-year-old male with a left spontaneous pneumothorax. He's post-op day two of a left pigtail. Um, neuro, his pain has been controlled with oxycodone. Um, and toward all, he's been out of bed and ambulating. He's been using his incentive spirometry. Um, we're gonna probably discharge the CT or the chest tube depending on how much output there is today, measured today. So, yeah. And always remember for heme, DVT prophylaxis because your patients are usually laying up in bed. They don't want to ambulate, but you have to make sure that they're getting the DVT prophylaxis. Question, do you guys know how to scrub in? So fortunately, in my OBGYN rotation, we learned how to scrub in. And then also at this hospital, they did give us like an official scrub course. So again, um, learning how to scrub. If you're a slow scrubber like me, I've literally had people come out like, what are you doing? What's taking so long? So I learned to pre-scrub. And if you guys pre-scrub because you're a slow scrubber like me, you're able to uh, use Avogard later and that's just more like a lotion almost and you just rub it on and then that way you don't have to go through the whole scrubbing process when they're waiting in the OR to scrub you in. Okay? So <laughs> that's a good tip right there from Doc Alley. Pre-scrub before your cases and you'll thank me later. 
So are you guys interested in surgery? Think about it. And don't actually close it off because you never really know what you're interested in until you give it a shot, right? I never thought I'd be interested in surgery and then I went and I went to surgery, well, I went to the guy in surgeries first and then I shadowed and then I was like, I really do like the OR. So. Um, if you guys want to impress your intendings or your residents, learn and practice how to suture before they um, hand you the tools to try to suture on a real life patient. Because even then, when I did practice, like the summer before my surgery rotation, even when they handed me the uh, suture tools, I was like, um, okay, spotlight's on me. <laughs> So if you practice, you have a little bit better orientation and you know what's going on versus if you don't practice and you're just kind of thrown into the water to see if you'll sink or swim. Um, there is a kit. I think I have my kit right here. You can go on Amazon, buy a suture kit, and then there's always YouTube videos you can follow like Below the Knife. And some of the kits, they have like a accompanying program that you can follow along with in the videos. And then people always say practice with gloves because it's not the same. Honestly, the suture kit is to learn the orientation of surgery. It's not to learn how to properly suture on a person because it's difficult. Um, human skin is not always the same. It won't feel the same as this, even though they try their hardest to make it feel like that. So just get the orientation of how do I pick this up? How do I do that? And then how do I tie a knot? And you'll be good. You don't have to be perfect, just have a basis. So before you go into any surgery, know what surgery you're going into and know the patient. Why do we want to know why, wh like what, what's the purpose of going into the surgery? So I had one patient who had metastatic renal cell carcinoma and we were doing a lobectomy because it had metastasized to the lung. If I didn't prep this patient, I wouldn't have known why we were doing the lobectomy. I would have thought maybe it was primary lung cancer. And then I was able actually, actually able to go to like pathology and see the renal cell carcinoma in the lung tissue. It was crazy. But yes, know what's the patient or know the indication for the surgery. Why is the patient getting the surgery? How old is the patient? Basic information. Um, they used to always have us go in and introduce ourselves to the patient and ask them if they had any questions. Are they okay with the medical school student being in the room? And if you are a future surgical patient, please let medical students in the room. I know you're scared that they're gonna cut you and something's gonna go wrong. The student is typically there to suture to suction, to hold instruments. They are not going to hurt you. So it's okay to let them in the OR so that they can learn, especially if they're aspiring surgeons one day. So um, that was um, an essential thing is knowing my patient and why we're going into the surgery and what's gonna happen in the surgery. So if I'm going into a room, why? Do I know what's gonna happen? And so I literally had an attending make me break down what I just witnessed in the surgery. Knowing specific stuff, especially anatomy, blood supply, innervation, surrounding organs, um, things you're concerned about like, oh my gosh, if I go too low in this hernia repair, I might nick XYZ. And now maybe the part you are waiting for the most is how I prepared for my surgery shelf exam. So my surgical rotation was 12 weeks. In the beginning, I took it slow. So I did about 10 questions a day and I did my Anki cards. And then as the uh, rotation progressed, I would go up 20 questions a day, 25. 30 and then by the end I was up to 40. I made sure that I started doing my practice exams about a month out. Um, of course as I've always said combining additional questions to build my stamina um, and then also I watched Emma Holiday. I watched Divine Intervention and I did have a reading source. I did not necessarily enjoy first aid for surgery. It was amazing for OBGYN, but for surgery it was just too much going on in that book. So I kind of gave it up maybe a month in. Um, I did get another book a little late called Surgery Recall, but my resources were relatively limited due to the time crunch of surgery. So I hope that was helpful for you guys in regards to how to prepare for the exam. It's the same way I've been saying prepare for your exams and if you haven't checked out that video about honoring your clinical shelves, then go check it out.
All in all, it was a tough rotation, I'm not going to lie, but did I enjoy it? Yeah. I also liked that I had a cool team of students that I got to work with during this rotation, and for the most part, the interns were really nice and helpful. So it's like I got a really good hands-on experience, a really close uh, personal like witnessing of what surgery as a resident will be like. <laughs> I took my mental health breaks. Um, when you have intense, intense rotation, just make sure you do take your mental health breaks because they are essential. Who are you if you're not your best self? That's all I have for you guys today about my surgery rotation. If I said anything that was helpful, make sure to hit the like button. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments and subscribe. Until next time, guys.